Uh, for a successful training program, um, we already know 80% of weight management results, meaning gaining or losing weight, is nutrition, right? So we have nutrition. Um, that's a star. It looks like a star to me. Um, nutrition. Next is resistance training, which we discussed program design and what nutrition, uh, what resistance training is all about. Um, I, have a, I have a whole series of videos on proper form and how to properly do resistance training. Um, we talked about supplements. Uh, we talked about muscle imbalances. Another one is cardio that no, we have not talked about yet. Okay. So, um, this is a successful fitness regimen. Or, we'll just say program. Program sounds better. Okay. A successful re uh, re a fitness program re requires proper eating, proper nutrition. It doesn't matter how hard you work out, as I said before, you're not going to lose weight or gain weight if that's your, if you're, if that's your goal, uh, unless your nutrition's there. Resistance training is responsible for helping you keep your lean body mass, uh, keep, stay strong, uh, make sure that you're losing body fat instead of weight. Supplements uh, helps you get your micronutrients to help you retain lean body mass, especially if you're in a calorie deficit, you're not getting enough nutrients. Uh, muscle imbalances, um, so you have proper form, proper posture, um, correct any injuries that you may have and prevent in future injuries from occurring. Uh, and cardio, cardio is important to help you burn more calories That's and your heart. That's pretty much it. Uh, your cardiorespiratory system, um, you can get stronger by resistance training through circuit training, but sometimes it's hard to get to the gym every single day or work out the same muscle groups um, every other day. So um, cardio, I usually like the circuit uh, in between uh, training sessions. Uh, cardio is, like I said before, important for the heart, but it's also helpful to burn calories. Helps you burn calories. Now, cardio burns Calories. Why I keep saying calories? Because cardio does not burn fat. It is a huge misconception out there that cardio burns fat. It does not burn fat. No, 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 no. It just burns calories. Remember I told you the analogy of a car and the fuel tank being glucose or, or carbs. Your body prefers to use glucose and you have a certain amount of glucose in your bloodstream. Your muscles store a certain amount of glucose. Uh, but once your glucose is used up, then it will attack, uh, attack your fat uh, for energy. So the easiest source of uh, energy again is, uh, is glucose. So when you're doing cardio, you're burning an average of about 70% of high intensity. Cardio is burning carbs or glucose. In your body. So, why why is that? No, that's how's that helpful? If you're trying to burn fat, I mean, how's that help? Because you're actually burning calories, which we know is carbs. Um, and being in that calorie deficit will help you lose fat overall in the long run. Now, high intensity cardio helps you burn more calories, but it helps you burn more carbs. If you're trying to burn more fat, what you want to do? I want to erase that. What you want to do is low intensity cardio. Low intensity cardio burns about 50 to 70 percent fat. Your body would rather when your when your body is in a rested state, that is your true fat burn zone. Problem is, you don't burn a lot of calories when you're rested, right? So low intensity cardio, you're looking at heart rate of maybe not very high, maybe 70 to 80 beats per minute. High intensity cardio is, um, is 
about 120 plus, higher higher intensity. Uh, it depends on your age or your maximal, uh, maximum heart rate. Maximum heart rate is really simple, it's 220 minus age. That's your max heart rate. What, and say for example, you're 40 years old, um, you know, your max heart rate would be 180. And then wherever your heart rate is uh, after that, so if your max heart rate's 180 and you get up to, for example, um, that's the max heart rate. And you get up to um, 150, okay? We'll say 150. Uh, that is about 80% of your uh, max heart rate, right? Um, good to take plus or minus some. And um, training in there is good for your heart, but it does not help you burn a lot of fat. It just helps you burn calories. Um, so if you're trying to be in a true fat burn zone, longer duration, low intensity cardio will help you do that. If you don't have time, that's fine. You can do high intensity cardio. You can do interval training. It's almost like voice resistance training in that sense. Um, but cardio does not, uh, if, if you just focus on cardio to build muscle, it's not going to happen. Um, endurance muscle fibers tend to be a lot smaller than fast twitch muscle fibers. And your resistance training muscle fibers uh, or strain training muscle fibers are going to be fast twitch. And they're going to be a lot bigger, um, usually about two to three times the size, which helps you burn more calories in the long run, right? Um, so your true fat burn state is at when you're at rest. And um, in summary, and it's important to burn more calories. So that's why cardio is important, especially um, like going for long walks, doing the bike, swimming, uh, different modalities of cardio that you can do. Um, Another, another thing to talk about cardio is plateaus. Your body is going to get adapted to whatever movement you do after three to four weeks, right? That's what we learned before. So the problem with, again, plateaus is that uh, based off the set principle, instead of burning before when you started, uh, maybe you never ran in your life, you started running. You're burning 500 calories an hour running, for example. Now, after four to eight weeks, your body's adapted. It, it does. It's more efficient at doing that movement. It's more efficient at running. Now you're only burning maybe 200 calories, maybe 250, maybe 300, right? So for the same amount of effort, your body's adapted and got used to doing that movement and you're burning half the calories, right? The problem with that is it's conducive to your goal if you're trying to lose body fat, right? Um, it, it's not gonna help you uh, get, to, uh, get, to, get you to lose body fat. So to overcome plateaus, you need to change the type of cardio you do maybe every four to eight weeks. So different types of cardio, um, walking, running, swimming. Uh, what else do we have? We have uh, cycling, uh, elliptical, hiking, Stairmaster, uh, boxing, you know, uh, fitness, you can do group classes, that are, group classes, fitness classes that are kind of just active. Uh, all those things are different types of cardio that you can do every four to eight weeks to overcome those plateaus. All right. Um, so we discussed nutrition, we discussed um, cardio, supplements, resistance training, um, we discussed uh, muscle imbalances, um, and pretty much er everything that I would discuss with the client during a fitness evaluation. Obviously I would get more information about their body, what their goals are specifically, and, and discuss how to get to their goal as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, especially since I specialize in correcting muscle balances, which is kind of like physical therapy. Uh, it is physical therapy. Um, I, w I would be designing a program that is designed for them, a sense of stretching, inhibiting, lengthening, activating, and um, integrating their entire body. Um, but these are just the basics. If you know the basics, you can build the foundation upon that, and you can, and you, at least you're, you're knowing and understanding what the right direction is, all based off science. Um, and you have the new knowledge and the tools now to uh, understand how to lose weight, how to lose body fat, 
um, what kind of food you need to be eating. Oh, another thing, sorry to mention. Uh, you need to, not sorry to mention, I forgot to mention. Three liters to four liters of water a day, um, especially if you're working out. Uh, that helps keep your kidneys um, filtering all the toxins and stuff that you may be excreting. Um, and that way you're not dehydrated. Um, it's important to make sure you are hydrated uh, just uh, from a functional standpoint, uh, especially for your kidneys. Um, yeah, so those that's all that's all the basic information. Um, I'll be I'll be creating more videos, um, going a little more detail for each one. But this is a basic um, fitness evaluation um, that I uh, I will give to clients, and that way they understand the basics of exercise science and nutrition and how to help you lead you the right direction so that way you can uh, see results and get to your goal. Uh, I'm Master Trainer Brad Glaser. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Um, I have NASM, PFIT, uh, CES, PES, NCSF um, certifications. I used to be a trainer, uh, Master Trainer at one of the world's largest gyms. And it was my responsibility to train trainers and um, teach them how to train other clients. Um, I ha held a couple certification classes for them, um, and I trained probably over a thousand clients and probably thousands, tens, thousands of hours already. So um, I have a good base knowledge of what works and what doesn't and this is all based off science and um, I hope that you learned something today and if you want to um, leave me a comment uh, any questions I will be glad to answer um, and don't forget subscribe and sign up for the fitness app um, it's completely free and it will help you um, give you a better direction of where you need to be all types of supplements that you that uh, that are out there they're not regulated by the FDA um, not all of them are at least um, most are not and since they're not regulated by the FDA uh, they can put anything they want in them so you just have to find one that you trust or try and see if you actually um, if it works for you um, absorption rate is in your uh, is also important too I typically like a liquid multivitamin so supplements liquid multivitamin um, because your small intestines what is what absorbs the very first uh, intestines out of the out of the stomach um, your small intestine is what absorbs micronutrients which is vitamins and minerals so liquid get you, you know for sure it's gonna get absorbed because it is liquid already so, uh, generally pills or capsules are time released and sometimes they might not be released um, in time <laughs> for your small intestine which they, they don't work um, also, a pre-workout you can do. Uh, pre-workout is a combination of caffeine. Caffeine just helps you get in the mood to work out, increases your, your heart rate, uh, uh, restricts your blood vessels, makes your heart pump a little faster. You combat the caffeine with nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens the blood vessels. Um, and... Um, um, you could also do uh, aminos with that. There's plenty of pre-workouts that you can take, same thing. Uh, you just have to try it and see if it works or not for you.